scientist. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. In studio. So let's begin. I know there's a documentary that you have and we'll be showing the trailer in a short while. But let's talk about the fall of the savory prices and the significance from where you sit. Thank you so much, Sophia. You know, uh, for, for the last couple of years, we've seen China being brimmed all over the world by many countries. Mm -hmm. And this is simply because of, uh, it is documented by the Elephant Trade Information System as the, uh, the giant or the first user, you know, looking at this trade from the America who are second leading consumer. Mm -hmm. But them coming up and saying that we are now stopping this ivory trade now, this is a big plus. Mm. However, it's something that needs to be monitored through the mic, which is monitoring illegal killing of elephants, mm -hmm. and also the CITES, because we might have some other countries emerging to be the, the, the first or the second user. And I'm yeah. sure we have seen even in some countries in Africa, whereby they are also becoming in mm. to begin using the ivory. Yeah. yeah. So they were legal, because for a long time people thought all of the poaching and trade in ivory was illegal. So there has been legal uh, platforms in which this sale and thriving of poaching as well has been happening. Isn't that correct? Yes, because some four countries in Africa, right. that was South, Afri South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, and uh, Moza, I mean, uh, and, and Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. according to the African or the societies, their population was in Apex 2. Apex 1 is when the species is threatened. Mm -hmm. So those four countries were given uh, Apex 2, meaning they can trade with ivory. So it, there was, it was legalized. And this came in 2008 when the societies, the Conference of Parties, allowed those four countries to do that, mm. which was very difficult because we saw the poaching upsurge mm -hmm. coming to Tanzania, coming to Kenya, and it was not easy to be able to differentiate that this ivory is from Zimbabwe that I have uh, go ahead to sell right. or Mozambique or any other country. But the last society, which was last year, this is when uh, the China, through the international forces by the veto, mm -hmm. they were asked to reduce domestic use of ivory. However, then they said we are going to close in the business. Mm -hmm. So it is now, okay, four countries are still legalized to sell ivory, but the China have said we will not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And we've seen one country called Namibia voluntarily saying we want to take back our population of elephants mm -hmm. to Apex 1, that means they are endangered. Okay, so the close of the legal market does not, in essence, affect the legal market, which in, in and of itself is still thriving and might even thrive more, isn't that correct? It, it doesn't affect because, one, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. the four countries, according to the CITES, they're still selling the ivory. And this is actually, we can see other countries are coming in. We've seen even last week, but one, there was over 100 tons of uh, uh, ivory that was again seized in Vietnam. Mm. That means it is conti we, we continue experiencing this. Only now, China have said them they are not involved in this. But we must check what is happening in the US. We must check what is happening in Europe mm -hmm. and other countries that have not registered the interest of or saying that we are out of this business. All right, talk to us about the Kenyan scenario. Paint for us a picture where we are in conservation efforts and the population of elephants in the country. Thank you. You know, we, we've looked at the population of elephants for the last, from 1979. And the population by then was 167,000 elephants. Mm -hmm. And it come down to 10 years, 1989, Kenya was left with 16,000 elephants. We lost over 300%. And from that time, 1989, we've seen our population increasing from 16 to nearly 30,000. And this was in 2011. And this is according to the African Elephant Database. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, from 2000 and 12 coming down there, our population came down. And our last census, which is done by the African elephant status, mm -hmm. report that Kenya we have 24,000 elephants. And this is showing from the highest population in Savo, which is 11,000, and Laikipia Saburu, which is 6,500 elephants. Mm -hmm. And according to the statistics, this is from KWS, this is from the institution that are working closely, Elephant Neighbor Center, among others the 78% of the poaching incidences is happening outside the park. And knowing the fact that about 70% of the elephants, they are outside the park. And the, the, the poaching has reduced a bit, but we're still uh, getting more information. Two, three weeks ago, we've lost even officers, senior officers in Savo, mm. elephants are killed in Savo, and it is very unfortunate, Sophia, mm. that 
there is good will, yes, but the Kenya Wildlife Service are not able to do this because they don't have resources. Right. Right. And we've seen the, uh, you know, torching of the uh, stacks of the stockpiles of ivory last year. We witnessed that some of the biggest in, in our history. Has that had any impact? You know, uh, what happened in last year, March, uh, destroying of 105 tons of ivory. Right. The message was going to the market, not to the poachers here in Kenya. Mm. Because, and I think this is one thing that we are celebrating to see China. And you saw other countries also destroying, burning the ivory. So this has sent a message to the market users, domestic users, but not to the African countries mm. where poaching is happening. I think for Kenyans here, and being involved in these walks uh, in different parts, mm -hmm. people have not, they're not connected with China. They don't kill elephants because Chinese are buying. Then it is because of the rumor that if you kill ivory, if you possess three kilograms of ivory, you this get... is going to be this much. Yeah. So, so what should now continue, and I'm very happy, that the Kenya Wildlife Service has continued doing this among other institutions to continue educating, raising awareness mm -hmm. to the Kenyans. We did the messages in the world that Kenya have now come out strongly. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kenya Brazil was actually, many people was, were not happy about them doing that. Mm -hmm. But they did it, and I'm very happy that we continue in the, I mean, uh, increasing awareness. And that's why you can see today people keep on reporting. I have seen an elephant somewhere. Mm -hmm. Elephants have been killed. That means the level of awareness is increasing every day. So you have a passion and have organized and been part of matches, you know, to be able to draw support for elephants and, and against poaching as well. Where does that come from? Where did that begin? Thank you. Uh, this started way back when I was in class eight. Mm -hmm. uh, remember my uncle by then, he was a student at Kijabe High School and being a wildlife club member. So he gave me a magazine called Koba Magazine. It's a Swahili name for a bush baby. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a magazine that is written by young students right. of wildlife clubs. Of. So that's where my interest started. And when I was joining my high school, Ishishi High School, there was no club and I started the club there. And it's through that being a wildlife club member in bringing students, teachers, even bringing people to the parks, that's how my interest was developed. Mm. Uh, I didn't know that I also get a chance to study wildlife management and then Kenya Wildlife Service adopted me in 1997 and I worked as a research scientist counting elephants mm -hmm. until 2005 when I went across the region of Africa counting elephants in other countries and 2012 is when I resigned and founded the Elephant Neighbor Center, whereby I've been working now, talking to people, engaging communities and local government, all sort of people, and bringing them together because there is this analogy that the wildlife belongs to the government. So I've been trying to bridge the gaps bring the community crews, bring the government crews, mm -hmm. we identify the way and the, the solution. Mostly uh, attitude, dealing with attitude, because mm -hmm. attitude that can change many, many things, mm -hmm. from poaching to human wildlife conflict, right. and also how to work with the elephants. So what are you planning now? Thank you very much. We, last year, between June and uh, October, we walked from Nairobi to Dar es Salaam mm -hmm. to Kampara. It was one of the longest walk I've ever done about one, uh, two, I mean, uh, 3,480 kilometers in 126 days. Uh, and the network has grown. I'm now planning a walk. This Saturday, I'll be walking from Nairobi to Marsabit. Wow. And uh, we are giving a visibility to one big elephant called Ahmed of Marsabit. Mm -hmm. This elephant lived in Marsabit uh, 40 years ago. And the president of Kenya, uh, Kenyatta, gave him a presidential protection because of his length, long and beautiful task, mm -hmm. which for three, four years he was given that security, but he died in 1975 because of uh, the, the, the natural death, but believed to have been caused by one of the bullets that he sustained in the head. So we'll be walking for the last 32 days, mm -hmm. and we want to hear, I want to hear people talking, you know, I'll be walking in Saburu region, part of Meru, part of Mount Kenya, those communities that have lived there for many years with the elephants, I want to hear from them. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What do they think that the government, the Kenyans, should know about the elephants? As in Nairobi here, we just talk about elephants. We have no elephant stem mm. here. But then they have elephants. How can we help them? Either by reducing or by helping them to uh, live with them better. Mm -hmm. Or if they say we remove the elephant from there, we then look for a way to remove them. Okay. But more importantly, we want to give the visibility of the Ahmed who receive protection and then ask the government 
and I'm happy that the national security have adopted elephant conservation as an issue. Mm -hmm. How can we now have the support of the elephant like we experienced in 1970? All right. And you have a documentary that just paints a picture. We have a trailer that we want to quickly have a look at and we'll talk more about this as well. Let's take a look. We have about 35,000 elephants. We can still accommodate more if we plan our country well. That's the iconic species. The elephant is Jerry trying to make out the baby elephant. Of all our wild species. Because it's the work. to serve us, we got a chance to go around with him and we educated the, the community. So that's just part of a trailer of a documentary that Nyamu uh, Jim is set to launch. What informed this? Uh, thank you. We are launching this tomorrow at the National Museums, mm -hmm. Louis Leakey, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, it is a collection of all my 12 works that I have done mm -hmm. since 2013. That include uh, 1,000 kilometers I did from Massachusetts to Boston. It's a collection of views of people, and also I will be sharing my inspiration, what right. caused me to do all these things, what has been my experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it has not been easy to do all these works, 9,800 kilometers mm -hmm. alone and, uh, you know, in the jungle talking to people who are chasing you away. Mm -hmm with these issues of insecurity. And I'll also be sharing the way forward because we have to wake up and we have to work. We have to involve everyone. And I'll also be talking about the upcoming walks. We are planning to walk from Dar es Salaam to Botswana mm -hmm. in next year, and bringing the five, the seven countries together. Mm -hmm. I also, I will also be talking about the opportunities for other institutions. What I have seen over times, People have think that KWS work independently. But there are many, many institutions that have come in to support KWS right. because, as I mentioned, about 30% of the elephants are only within the national parks. Mm. The larger part of the animals are outside the park, and there are opportunities, not for the communities, also for organizations, mm. for investors to go and help them, to, do, to help communities, and they can also do business. Yeah. Not just foreigners coming from all over the world to come and invest, like in Saburu, like Kipia. We have opportunities for Kenya who can also do business through the wildlife conservation. Right. So to our viewers this morning who would say want to be part of one of your walks, would want to be part of some of the efforts you're involved in to support elephants and conservation, uh, as well as, you know, just preaching against poaching, how is it they can be involved? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm happy. This is what is coming up every moment. We, we have a very active Facebook, uh, Elephant Neighbor Center, or Jim Justice Nyamu and I have people who are working very hard to ensure that any information comes there. Like now, we, we have been at the Sardit for the last one week at the Expo, and we have also, also collected the same information there. This Saturday, we are beginning the work from the National Museums at 9, mm -hmm. and we expect our CS who will be with us tomorrow, plus other embassies and Kenyans. Please come and join us. You could choose to walk a whole day up to KU, that's where we will stop. Mm. And then on Monday morning, we'll begin from KU and enter Dika, and then all the way to uh, Moranga, Sagana. And through there, we always say, if you want to walk like three, four days, please let us know. We prepare you. Mm. I know most of Kenyans, and I've seen this, uh, I don't know whether you're among them. <laughs> People have never slept in tents. We sleep in tents. I have slept so, once. <laughs> so come and uh, we'll let you know. If you don't have your tents, yeah. we can help you to get one tent. But it's very important, and I want to let Kenyans know, I'm doing this out of my goodwill. I'm not in any payments. We sell T-shirts, we sell this jacket, mm. list buds. They're available because I hire two vehicles to support me carrying the campaign equipment. We have public address system, we have uh, water, we have even the camping equipment, the, 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 the tents and the sufrias and all those things. Mm. So if you wish to help us, we have that information which is on our website. Okay. You can come and see how can you help us. And we are, I'm very happy to see some Kenyans, yeah. individual Kenyans, Muzafa, Jumakan, Sari Mohammed, people coming in strongly and say, we want to hire a vehicle. And I'm happy. Mm. Even our governor will be joining me, the governor of Nairobi, mm. Ivan Skidero, will be at the museum. Please come. I always say that there were elephants, even me who is working very hard uh, like this. If those elephants come, they will not leave to me. Yeah. I'll be running away. They don't know whether I'm working very hard. So mm. it's a high time for us Kenyans come together. And I'm happy the president said that the Kenya is the light of Africa. We have provoked so many African countries 
to come and support conservation. Right. We can make a difference on Saturday. All right, many thanks. Jim Nyamu, elephant research scientist, with us this morning. We wish you the very best, and we want to now play that full trailer uh, of the documentary that you're launching. It's tomorrow. Thank you. And, uh, of course, we'll be following up on the walk even uh, as well to cover a lot as much as possible because this is the platform we have been given to shed light on some of the efforts you and others are doing to ensure that our elephants are kept safe. So let's have a look at...